Hey everybody, Steve here, and uh, today we're on a road, doing a little bit of driving. And usually, uh, on the Hecko channel, I don't really do driving videos that often, but I figured I wanted to talk about some things. We have to understand as believers, our actions have consequences. And so, that's why we see so many things in God's Word where you're going to reap what you sow. Uh, we see Yeshua talking about, uh, you know, that you'll know a person by their fruit, so good fruit or bad fruit. <clears throat> and that, uh, in particular, when we look at false teachers and false prophets, a lot of people don't understand that, let's say you have a tree, uh, let's say you have an apple tree that's diseased, and some of its fruit can be good and some of it can be really bad. So I think people tend to forget, they'll look at the good things that are going on and it's just like a person who breaks the law. Let's say they ran a, a stoplight and they're given a ticket and they got to go to court and they go before the judge and they say, well look at all these good things I did. You know. And the judge is going to say, you know, well, wait a second, you're not here for the good things that you did in your life. You're here for the law that you broke. And we have to understand that when we break those laws or those rules, those instructions, there's going to be consequences. When we look at our lives as being Christians, uh, it was actually a derogatory term for believers uh, who followed Yeshua the Christ, the Messiah, it was meant as, as an insult because these people followed Yeshua and their actions, their studying of God and His Word and their relationship with the Messiah was reflected in their lives. <clears throat> and that just as Yeshua didn't engage in the sin and in the, the lustful pleasures of the world, so too these believers followed that example out of the conviction of their heart that God placed on them via His Word that lasts forever. Yeshua said, you know, me and my words will last forever and, uh, uh, you know, that's the way it's going to be. Um, but it's interesting in today's Christianity, the majority of people who claim to be Christians, there is, they have to make that claim. In other words, you know, you, you rarely have people that will ask people and say, well, hey, you know, you're, you're different than anybody else, than everybody else. You don't do the same things. Uh, what's, what's different about you? You know, you're a good person. You're, uh, your family's well behaved. You know, you, uh, you don't seem to, whatever the case may be, it is very rare that today's American Christians or Americanized Christianity, that people will come up and, and ask them, what's, what's different about you? And usually people ask that question because they see the fruit of your life. And that might be a little convicting to somebody because if no one is, if you claim to be a Christian, you have to tell people that you're a Christian and it's kind of like a surprise to the people around you, that might be something you might want to look at in your life. Now, I'm not saying, actually what I'm saying is been there, done that. So, when we look at our lives in regards to God and His Word, we most importantly have to apply it to our own lives. God has to place that conviction upon our heart. Otherwise, we end up just following a list of rules, trying to please God, uh, but our hearts are far from Him, kind of like the Pharisees. But it's interesting that Yeshua told the Pharisees, or He told His disciples, He said, follow what, what they preach, but just don't do what they do, because they are hypocrites. They are hypocrites against God and His Word. So, with our, our lives, we are supposed to look at God and His Word and how His instructions, His directions for life, uh, which is 
if you go back to the Hebrew, the word is Torah, uh, which is often translated into English as the law. But if we really look at the law, or a better translation is the instructions and directions for life, it's the instructions and the directions that a loving father would give their children. If you do these things, that'll keep you out of trouble. If you don't do those things, um, you know, that'll keep you out of trouble and you'll, your life will be blessed. You'll have a, you know, you won't go through trials and tribulations of sin if you stay clean, if you are holy as God is holy. And then a lot of people don't understand, well, how can you be holy? The word holy means set apart. A lot of Christians believe this or they know this, but they don't understand what holy is. Holy is set apart. <clears throat> and we see examples of this in the Old Testament uh, where there's clean and unclean. Uh, there's things where we're called to be holy. There's whole things that are holy and then there's things that are plain. Uh, we're not to, you know, uh, come against God's things that he has called holy. And if he's holy and he calls us to be holy, then as we conform ourselves with his word, you know, you've heard that scripture, you know, with the, the washing of his word and to renew our minds with the washing of his word, uh, to go over his word day and night, and, um, to become more like him because he is in us and we're in him, that the more of our lives, our flesh that we lay down, the more we become like him. The more we lay down the flesh and the sinful desires of the world and the more observant we become to God and his word due to the conviction that he placed on our hearts that uh, brings us to a point in our walk as we walk in the Lord it's a sanctification process the more we know him the more the truth of his word uh, that comes to us the more conviction and then you know if we become more like him then we're gonna see things from his perspective such as sin we're gonna we're gonna see that you know sin is is something that is detestable before God and the more we mature in the Lord and people mature at different rates uh, some people have been Christians for a long time but they can be mentally smart to know a lot of facts but it doesn't mean that they're mature in the Lord. Likewise, you can also have some believers that are fairly young in regards to time of being a believer, but they are mature in the Lord. But it all depends on how much they submit to God. When we look, uh, you know, during this week's readings of the Old Testament, we, we come across Leviticus 13 and we see you know, 14 and 15, we see these these rules and these instructions that God gave uh, the Israelites. And it was like dealing, it seems like some of the most boring stuff you've ever heard. Uh, you know, well, dealing with a skin disease, if it looks like this, if it has a white hair in it, if it's spreading, if it's that, you know, go, go to the priest and then if it's still there, you know, you're going to be kind of isolated, stay away from everybody. And, then you got to come back in seven days and it goes on and on and on and the same thing with sexual relations and, and it seems like all these rules and instructions at first glance are you know what does this have to do with me in my life well let's step back and think about it we know that we're going to reap what we sow and so if I stick my finger in a, in a light socket uh, I'm going to get burned. I'm going to get electrocuted. It's going to be a bad thing. But if I follow the advice of my father who says, you know, don't stick your finger in the electrical socket, then the blessing of observing that instruction from my father gives me better chance to live a long and less painful life. <clears throat> I hope that makes sense. Now, does this mean that my life will be totally absent from trials and tribulations? No. We'll always be tempted as long as we are in this world. But 
what we need to understand is that we're going to reap what we sow. Our actions have consequences. Otherwise, we wouldn't see in the New Testament where it says, you know, it's a point a man wants to die and then face judgment. We have to give an account for every word and the things that we do. We see Yeshua talked and, and uh, brought out the points about, you know, hey, you know, the, to the least of my brethren that you do these things, you know, clothe, uh, clothe the poor, feed the hungry, you know, give a glass of water of my name. Yeshua said, you've done it unto me. And that is the way our acts of service should be, not because we're trying to please God, we're trying to attain salvation because we are saved by grace and grace alone, but as we are a new creature in Christ, after that saving grace of what Yeshua did on the cross, we have a new nature. That new nature is to do God's good works. Um, the New Testament, it talks about how we are a nation of priests, a holy nation of people belonging to God to do His good works. <clears throat> to understand what a priest does, because most people in the New, you know, new Testament believers will read that, but they don't understand, well, I'm a priest, okay, big deal. And that's pretty much all they understand. They don't understand that, going back to Leviticus 13, 14, 15, that it was the priest's job to identify symptoms of problems, and if those problems arose, that they would prescribe uh, a procedure in which they would not infect the other people around them. They have to understand about 3,000 years ago, 3,500 years ago, these instructions that God gave to his people through Moses, or Moshe is his name in Hebrew, it was to give those people long life so that they would be blessed. Now, you can imagine about 150 years, you know, in just a short amount of time here in the United States, they would bleed people because they thought that disease and infection and the reason a person was sick is because their blood was bad. So they would drain the blood of an individual which would reduce the amount of white blood cells which would uh, weaken the physical body and it wouldn't be able to heal itself. They were doing the exact opposite of what God instituted in His Word you know, over 3,000 years ago. Don't cut yourself. Don't bleed yourself. Don't make marks for you know, because the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Imagine that. But part of the job of the priest was that they were supposed to identify symptoms, physical symptoms, and to prescribe procedures in which to overcome that sickness or ailment so it wouldn't affect other people. Isn't it interesting that as New Testament believers, uh, or believers of an everlasting covenant, the new and renewed covenant, of Yeshua, which is just uh, going deeper into God's old covenants of not to sin, to be holy and set apart, that besides keeping ourselves healthy physically uh, and by what we eat, that we also have to be careful with what we eat or put into our minds, what we listen to, what we see, uh, what we meditate on, what we draw into our hearts and minds because that will have an effect. There is a cause and effect, always. You can't get away from the laws that God instituted and in how things work. Whatever you ingest in your body, it's going to have an effect on that body. Same thing in the spirit. Whatever you inject into your mind and your heart is going to have an effect on your life. <clears throat> so as New Testament believers, when we are called to be a nation of priests, holy people, that means we are supposed to be set apart from the sin of this world. We're supposed to be set apart from the false teachings and the false prophets, uh, those that would seek to lead us away from God and His instructions. Isn't it interesting, it was brought out today by a, a really good brother today, that, you know, 3,500 years ago, God gave these instructions, these laws, on how to deal with skin diseases, how to deal with ailments, how to deal with mildew and mold and, and all types of 
of medical problems and how to deal with those things so that people would not spread infectious disease. And yet we see that when the enemy pops up and he comes against God's Word and tries to hide it, we see the times of the Dark Ages where God's Word was hid uh, at a time. We also see that those instructions were lost and and a part, if you, if you read uh, Leviticus 14, 15, and 16, you'll see passages or verses where it talks about that if you go against these things, the land will vomit you out. That really didn't make much sense to me <laughs> because it's like, how can the earth physically vomit a person out of, out of you know, that's just crazy talk. <clears throat> but really, when we go against God's rules and instructions, we come at that time where Satan comes against God and his word, hides it during the dark ages, uh, the plague runs rampant, people forget God's instructions, and there we see the destruction uh, and the death of millions and millions of people because they didn't follow those Barney basic instructions, those medical instructions. Things that we take for granted today uh, and we're, you know, we just don't understand. Well, when we, that's what happens in our lives physically when we go against his instructions. It's interesting because a lot of Christians will say, well, God's law has been done away with. It's, it's been nailed to the cross. If that is the case, then all, then we need to get rid of the, the current practices in hospitals today uh, for washing wounds, uh, for quarantining people that have infectious diseases uh, and all the things that go along with that we have to that means we would have to do away with uh, prudent and proper medical care that keeps us alive and has been found to keep people alive and keep them having a longer life uh, and all this came about you know 3,000 3,500 years ago when, you know, back 200 years ago, I mean, we, the, the reason George Washington dies is because he had, he had a sickness and they bled him to death, basically. Weakened his immune system and his, his body couldn't fight back uh, because the life is in the blood. That's what the Old Testament says. So there is still a place for God and his word and his instructions. Another interesting thing that I found out that during that dark age of, of the plague and where millions were 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 dying because they were ignoring God's word you know uh, forget washing your hands forget washing your body if you you know uh, back in the dark ages people in Europe would not wash at all it was very rare and so you know you had rampant disease you had and that's why the plague took off like a wildfire but this interesting note that I heard today was talking about um, Venice and how the mayor of Venice, you know, all these people are dying of the plague, but they noticed that in the Jewish area of town, they weren't stricken with the plague. Well, the mayor gets with the Jewish leaders and says, you know, well, wait a second, we don't understand. Um, you know, you're not, you're not having as much plague, uh, barely any, compared to the rest of the town. What's the deal? Well, we follow the Levitical laws that that, you know, Hashem, uh, Adonai, gave to us. Not just another name for God. And so what the, uh, it was in Italy, and uh, so anyway, the mayor took those Levitical laws, instituted them for those uh, instances and those procedures for skin diseases, plague, and things like that. And that area uh, of Venice in Italy overcame the plague and it was where the, really the first breakout of where the plague actually broke and uh, you know it kind of eventually run, it, run its course because where things are clean and sterilized uh, the infection doesn't spread so but from the account I heard today that uh, the Italians took the Jews and killed them and you know instead of saying thanks for you know your God and the instructions that he gave you thousands of years ago 
um, they ended up killing the Jews. And isn't that like us sometimes? You know, instead of being the New Testament priest that we are called to be to identify uh, false teachings, uh, to identify the false prophets, the carriers of spiritual diseases that go against God and His Word, that now in American Christianity we've gotten to the point of where we welcome in the diseased theologies, the diseased doctrines uh, and the traditions of men that go in direct conflict with God and His Word. Uh, some of you know that uh, I was involved in a cult and the cult leader you know, it started out as Christian, and of course, the cult never says, hey, these are all the bad things we do, come join us. Um, but it always sticks to the truth. It's like what Satan does. You know, 99% truth, but it's that 1% of rat poison that will kill you. But a lot of American Christians today, or American Christianity, will not teach their believers how to test everything. They don't teach their believers how to mature and grow. They don't test or teach them how to test everything against the standard of God's Word. And that standard is present throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. So, you know, today what I learned was just, uh, it was just more confirmation that what God told His children, those instructions and teachings that He gave them thousands of years ago, do indeed, if you observe them, lead to blessing and long life. And it reduces the chances of disease. And as today, New Testament priests, uh, you know, a, a holy priesthood before God to do His good works, that those things are supposed to be on our plate. That's our responsibility. That's one of the reasons why we grow and mature in the Lord is so that we can help identify these problems or symptoms which lead to the problems of sin and flesh and and uh, heresy, um, rampant sin, continued sin, whatever you want to call it, to identify that and go back to God and His Word and His procedures to get rid of those things within our lives so that we can continue that walk of sanctification, so that we can continue uh, to be holy as He is holy. And, it's, and we just keep walking it. You know, it's a journey that will last the rest of our lives. And as we mature in the Lord, then we are also to make disciples, to go into all the world and make disciples. So as we are saved by grace and we're made a new creature in Christ, we're made a new person, uh, Scripture talks about how we're His sons and daughters. And with that becomes, comes responsibility to help out those around us, just as the life of Yeshua God sent His only begotten Son that whoever should believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that our lives are to be an example and follow after the life of Yeshua. Um, really, it comes down to that. It's the simplicity of following those instructions once you've been saved by faith. And once that grace doesn't go away, some people say, well, you know, the New Testament is the age of grace and the Old Testament is the age of law. Well, that's not the case. Uh, if you look in the Old Testament, you also see that people received grace from God. Moses had, or Moshe had grace, for, received grace from God. So grace was not an alien word uh, to the people of the Old Testament because God gave them grace as well. But what happens is sin got in the way, and even though in Deuteronomy, what we see in God's Word where God says, you know, my instructions that I have given you are not burdensome. The instructions I've given and the rules to be set apart and to be holy are not difficult. But what happens is that we would rather go after the, the flesh and the pleasures of this world. So in light of that, that we couldn't keep God's covenant, uh, He sent His Son. He sent Yeshua, the Messiah, that with that, and He took our place on the cross when we broke God's laws that we could be presentable, that we could be forgiven. So now that we are forgiven, we continue that walk in that life. So, and you know, we're supposed to, His law is a light, it's a lamp. 
uh, it guides us into, you know, it guides us into all truth. His law is truth. His instructions are truth. And if you look at laws, if you look at the Levitical laws, and you look at the medical uh, laws like Leviticus 13 and 14, and you'll see that the the science behind those laws, thousands of years before medical science uh, dis so-called discovered them, uh, is just amazing. And it just goes to prove that God's Word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Um, you know, we still use uh, those things there when it comes to diseases, uh, when it comes to, you know, to isolating people. And if, you know, if you have a fever and that, you know, if you're having problems or, you know, if there's infectious diseases that you have or open cuts that you're supposed to clean them and, and isolate them and, you know, your kids get sick, what do you do? You don't take them to daycare because you don't want to get the other kids sick. These Barney basic rules of thumb that will uh, keep us from sickness and disease uh, is present in God's Word. And as much as we take it for granted, today we also understand that spiritually we have to grow and mature and know the truth and the truth will set you free. It will set you free. What, what are we set free from? It's interesting because a lot of uh, um, so-called Christians don't even know. They say, well, you have to be saved. Well, what do you have to be saved from? They don't, they don't even know, well, you need to be saved from hell. No, that's the destination. That is the end result. That's not what you're being saved from. If it is a point a man wants to die and face judgment, what we are being saved from is our sin and being guilty before God on judgment day. Sin separates us from God. And so if we continue to not confess our sins and to not be forgiven by God, then we are lawbreakers and we are lawless. We do not care about God and his words and in his instruction, uh, his directions for life, but we go against that. And that's why we have so many problems in the world today is because we go against those instructions. We go against uh, those directions of, hey, you know, don't don't sleep around uh, because if, you, if you're observant to that, you'll have a long life and you'll be disease free. But yet, what do we see in the world today is, oh, sleep around as much as possible. And if you get uh, an STD, uh, there's a pill for it. But the problem is, as the escalating problems of disease is that these diseases are becoming resistant to antibiotics and medicines. And, and some of these things are becoming uh, epidemic. And it's being passed on uh, we see that, you know, you're going to reap what you sow. And we, we're seeing now in the world, more than ever, uh, we're seeing mothers that are giving birth to children and passing on diseases to their children because they weren't observant to those simple instructions that God gave. And yet they don't, they, they go to church and they say, well, I don't understand, you know, I'm going through all these problems in my life and it's, I want God to bless me. I want that long life. I don't understand why I have, why I have this disease or that disease or or why my, my life is a wreck. It's because you're going against God's word. So think about that. If your life, if there is not fruit in your life that can be recognized as being holy and set apart, take the time to really look at your life. Examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. And I'm not telling you to do anything that, that I, you know, I need to do as well. But once you understand that, it took a long time for me to, to get to that point uh, because I was led astray. But if you stick to God and His Word, His in-context Word, then you won't have to worry about it. Stay in Him, His Word, and uh, you'll be amazed at the blessings that you'll receive. It doesn't mean that you know, you're going to get a house and a, and a Rolex watch or a Rolls Royce, but the relationship that you have with Him in observing His words in his, his directions will be like the instructions of a loving parent, a loving father who wants the best for you. It doesn't mean that, uh, you know, everybody's going to be a millionaire, but the thing is, is passing on those instructions uh, to help you in your life. So, well, anyway, that's it. I'm into town and it's something to think about. You know, if God's law has been done away with, 
you know, we need to get rid of the majority of the medical practices that we have for sanitation and, and, and diseases and, and just do away with it. And you think about it, if we go against, going back to that scripture, I was going to tie that in there, going against his laws, his rules, his directions, his instructions for life, the land will vomit you out. And because the land will be ridden with disease like it was during the plague. Uh, people will ignore God in his word and it will come to a time that instead of, of acknowledging God and repenting and going back to him, that there will be those that will end up thumbing their nose at God and saying, hey, you know, we're going to do this on our own. We're going to recover and we don't need God. We're going to make a pill to take care of those things and to cover up our immoral, our immoral behavior. We don't have to worry about being guilty because there's a pill for that. And yet at, that time, at this time, we can truly see where the morals of this country have gotten to the point of where we are no longer a nation that is set apart, that is no longer great. It is now a nation that is dying, and is, that is being plagued and infected by false teachings, uh, by communist manifestos, by social doctrines of redistribution of wealth, uh, you know, go ahead and sleep as much as you can with anybody. It doesn't matter. You know, that's not the way it's supposed to be. So anyway, I'm getting into town, and I think you, you understand how the land can vomit you out. So take care. God bless. And we'll see you on the next video. Think not, I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Yeshua, reference Matthew 5, 17 and 18. Seeing it is one God, which shall justify the circumcision by faith, and the uncircumcision through faith, do we then make void the law through faith? God forbid, yea, we establish the law. Romans 3, 30 and 31.